and then to um, shape a crystal or carve a crystal because people do that all the time um, and procure it. I feel like, yeah, there should be some level of compensation for the effort that's been made to make sure that someone can have this in their hands. Um, but then there gets to the point where people become very religious about it and they can't seem to do without the the tool and they want it to be a part of how things have to be done. And I think that's where my frustration became because we noticed that even when we look at modern culture right now, um, people are getting their foot, they're getting themselves in trouble because they're stuck with how something is supposed to be done, right? Um and, and we see this in a few different ways. We can see this with the Hebrew Israelites. I'm not gonna, I have a separate video that I'll make about that. But we can see that because there is a very strict doctrine and way that things have to be said. We can see this with, um, there's a funny, there's a debate going in my mind right now that I've seen before between a comedic priest right? And then a Hebrew Israelite. And they're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Both have essentially um, made these two concepts their religion, meaning what they abide by, their rules and how they must live. Um, and in that, now they're debating against each other. And the difference between the two was that one was very scholarly, um, he, he has done research, constantly reading, constantly in books. But the reality is, is that there's still a religious kind of thread in how things are done. And the other one has only just read the one, their, their, their studies and focuses are really just kind of based around the one thing. Now, um, and they don't come off as, as scholarly, but more passionate almost because they have focused so hard on the one thing that they are so passionate that they can feel they can regurgitate the information backwards and forwards. Whereas other person will has a larger scope of information that they have to navigate through. Either way, both of it's a religious kind of methodology and it's a waste of time. Well, to me, it's a waste of time because I'm like, well, what does this do for your self-development? What does this do for your self-realization? What does it do for anything other than you ascribing um, to this way of thinking and now you're trying to fit yourself into that box? So when you get into spirituality, the whole point is, is to become free. It's to release those burdens. It's to um, realize that not everything is going to answer, you know, your questions. And that's always usually the main thing. Um, when people step into a more spiritual way of being, um, they realize that, okay, I don't necessarily fit into this world, this doctrine. I mean, I can look at Christianity, for example, and there's just no way that I fit into that Bible. I just don't right? It just, it just doesn't work. There's too many things that I simply just don't agree with, right? Um, and then that Bible, of course, is, is the foundation. Um, the foundation of that is the Torah. Um, and, and I don't fit into that. I don't fit into any of these things, right? Like I, I took an assessment of myself and I'm like, no, I, I belong. There's a, there's a, I, I feel like I'm a part of the world and beyond, right? And I can't be held into this little pocket to try to understand myself. But that was something that I was allowed to figure out on my own. Um, and then if you look into something like um, Hinduism, look at all the different religions. It, it works if you're only there, right? So if you're Hindu and all you've ever known is Hindu and you never leave that little part of your world, um, it's to me, for me personally, that's the only way I would have ever been able to be in any kind of religion. The only way I would have ever been able to be religious is if I just just was there and I never knew anything else. But the moment you open yourself up to the world and you meet people and you learn to appreciate them and you love them, um, then for me, and this has always been my approach, I can't fit into any of this these doctrines, these doctrines at all. And that's a hard place to be in because you feel a little bit of an outsider now because almost everyone around you is fitting themselves into this doctrine and that doctrine and that doctrine and that doctrine. And you're like, yeah, I don't fit into any of these because I am, I'm everywhere, you know? Um, and so being a part of that everywhereness means you also have to figure out, well, who are you? Where do you fit? You go within. So then when you go within and you start 
having this everywhere approach and you realize that you there's so much to learn, then you come into the new age. <laughs> and now you have a new religion. <laughs> and that new religion pretty much, um, if you get caught in it, that new religion pretty much is this. Um, you you now use crystals for your um, spiritual development, right? You use yoga <laughs> for, so you can meditate. You use um, uh, Reiki healing, you know, to heal your stuff. You now there's a there's a something for everything, all for the people who have opened up their minds, right? You know, now you can be part Wiccan over here, you can dabble over in, with hoodoo, and you can do all these different things. They're all there and they're all for sale. <laughs> it's all for sale. Um, and then it becomes in a way a bit of a rule. So if you look at crystals, there's a crystal bible. You know, there is something really called the Crystal Bible where um, they have decided what each of these crystals mean, you know, in detail and what their magical powers are and what they do and how they do it. Um, then if you go into the herbs, I think I think we heard Palo Santo and Sage. All of a sudden, we know that different um, uh, tribes use Sage and Palo Santo to clear out the space, right? And other places use tobacco, just depending on what um, their preferred method is. But now the main thing you have to use is sage, right? And then people get creative and they start adding things to the sage bundles now. Like I see lavender and sage bundles. I see pine and sage bundles. I'm like, I see all these different, oh, now we have white sage and different kinds of sage. Um, and then it becomes this whole thing of like, if you're gonna do it, here are all the different ways to do it. And this is what's for sale. Um, then you have, so then that becomes a method. And then they tell you exactly how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to light it. You're supposed to fill up the whole area with smoke. Then you um, uh, say a chant of some sort, and then you open up the windows, and then all the stuff goes out. So now you have taken on a belief system. You've taken on um, a, a ritual, and you've taken on all of this just to light some freaking sage, um, to light dead leaves. And, and, and for me, it's a bit annoying. It's annoying that it's fun, right? It's To me, it's a fun thing to use, but it becomes very religious over time because this is how now it has to be done. So I'm, what, I'm making this video because I wanted people to liberate themselves from these things because we all have a little something that maybe we be, we've made somewhat religious along the way. Um, and I'm like, unless it's something that is really um, to you, how it's unique to you. It's, you really don't need it. 